and we begin. We begin this Advent season. We begin a new Christian year on the Christian calendar. And we begin by waiting. We wait for the one who is going to teach us and show us the way to live, to live the way that God has created us to live our lives. And so we wait for the darkness to fade as the light of God comes to us and brings us our first gift, which is hope. The Advent season, in this Advent season, excuse me, we are going to use a Christmas story that is not typically used during this Advent season, but it is a Christmas story, no doubt. And I would say perhaps it's the most profound Christmas story that we have in all of Scripture. We turn to the Gospel of John for this story, and this Gospel of John, he also names the beginning, just like we name Advent the beginning of the year. And in Genesis, let's go back to Genesis for a minute, in the very beginning of our Scripture, we have this line regarding God the Creator. The line is this, let us make humankind in our image. Right from the beginning of scripture, we don't have a singular creator. Somebody's hanging around with this creator and who is this other, this our? Well, the Gospel of John gives us the answer to that question. John's beginning has a whole other player involved in all of creation, and that player is what we call the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And he was in the beginning with God. And all things came into being through him and without him. Not one thing came into being. That is where we begin this Christmas story. The prologue of John is, in my view, one of the most intriguing, one of the most profound passages in all of scripture. And if you consider the full prologue, which we are going to do over the next four weeks, we are going to examine this prologue, you might agree with me when I say that perhaps this is the most perfect Christmas story we have in all of scripture. So out of all the Gospels, the Word comes down and plants itself into a man who walked the earth for 33 years. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we call those the synoptic Gospels, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the incarnation of God with us, of what we call Emmanuel, begins with Jesus' birth. But in juxtaposition to these three Gospels, we have the Gospel of John. And he is the one who grasps the truth that Christ exists from all eternity to all eternity. From the very beginning, if there is such a thing, to the very end if there is such a thing. And this is not just the perspective of the Gospel of John, by the way. Richard Rohr points out that we see this idea of the cosmic Christ in many different places in scripture, and he lists them. And what is to note in these things that I'm gonna list for you in a moment is that all of this idea of a cosmic Christ is right in the beginning 
of each of these letters. So if you dig into the beginning of Ephesians, you will see the idea of a cosmic Christ. If you dig into the beginning of Colossians, you will see the beginning of the cosmic Christ. If you dig into the beginning of the letter to the Hebrews, you will see the beginning of the cosmic Christ. If you dig in to the beginning of the first letter to John, you will see the cosmic Christ is revealed. The truth that Christ has existed from all eternity to all eternity, from the beginning to the end, is what we call the cosmic Christ. Here lies the definition of Christ. Our Earth is only about four or five billion years old, but the universe itself is over 14 billion years old. So at this time of history, we might call it the Big Bang. We can call it whatever we want. And it might, you know, this time of history might even go farther back, but science tells us at this point, on this day, that the universe is over 14 billion years old. And this is what we call, or what Richard Rohr calls, the first incarnation. In Jesus, we believe that a man who is matter is merged, is made one with the divine energy of God. You might say the spirit of God. Matter and energy merging together as one. And this didn't begin 2,000 years ago. This began at the beginning of time. When God's divine power merges with matter is the incarnation. And that is what we define as the Christ. All things came to being through him. And so we recognize the Christ, or perhaps Christ is simply another name for the word. I think so. So as we recognize the word, or this divine power or energy or whatever it is, this Christ, this oneness, longs for us to participate. And the key is that we need to somehow stay connected, stay connected to the holy, stay connected to the sacred. And when we do this, we too become the Christ. I know that sounds blasphemous, but Paul in the letter, in, in some of the letters of Paul, he calls Christians little Christs. And that's because when we follow Jesus' way, Jesus' way is a combination of matter and divinity. But we are fickle, and we are easily distracted, and that connection between Christ and our physical bodies, it comes and goes randomly. The Christmas story does not begin with the baby that is born 2,000 years ago. The original incarnation of the Creator of matter and energy in one is timeless. The story of the baby in the manger is sweet and it's sentimental and we all love it. But the story of the cosmic Christ, that is a force that is unimaginable. And it is a more complete 
Christian story. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. As bizarre as the cosmic Christ might sound, I think it is the biggest and, dare I say, it is the most complete, the most whole Christmas story in all of Scripture, in everything that we have. And this is the only story, by the way, that calls us to participate. It is the only Christmas story that calls us into action, into seeking to be one with the God energy, into seeking to be little Christs. And that is so different from the lovely and sentimental stories of the baby that is born in the manger. But in those Christmas stories, we are solely spectators. We are passive. We are not called to action. We are not called to be one with God. The cosmic Christ, the Gospel of John, his Christmas story, calls us to be one with God, calls us to be like Jesus, Emmanuel, calls us to be like what Paul says, little Christs. Let that be so. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light for the world to see. Christ, be our light, shining.